Tonight, I talk about a car, my tripod falls over, and I struggle from the heat. How's it going everyone? It's that blue bath here and welcome back to the channel and another video. And you join me on a scorching Tuesday. I mean, bloody hell, it's 20 degrees out. I mean, I'm not complaining. It's very nice indeed, but it is very warm. So you'll have to bear with me if I start sweltering because, yeah, it's quite hot. But hey, it's quite nice, I must admit. It's nice to have a bit of a warm, sunny weather occasionally. So hey, got to do something while the sun's out. And I thought I'd do a video for you all. Now, as you saw yesterday, I did a video on the 695 XSI Yamaha edition and told you why it's such a good car in terms of value for money. But today I want to go through the 70th anniversary model and tell you why it's such a great car and why it's a good alternative to the Biposto. Now, I want to sort of make this a series, really, and go through all of the special editions, talk about them, what you get with them and the benefits of owning them. So today we're going to uh, move on to the 70th anniversary edition and uh, well, how about we get started? So let's start off with what the 70th anniversary model actually is. And well, as it indicates in the title, it's an anniversary and it's celebrating 70 years of a bath. Now we actually have had a few anniversary editions, the earliest one being the 50th anniversary. -o. It was a series three in Gara white with some nice red accents, a red lip around the wheel, red bonnet scorpion and a red leather interior. Very sporty, very nice and very unique. And then moving on to the 70th anniversary where we got a 70th line and a, the proper 70th anniversary 695. And now we have the 75th anniversary model which has just come out. I actually have made a video on this car and if you'd like to see that, I'll put the thumbnail in the top corner so you can find it in the list of videos. Very nice car indeed. Sort of reminds me of the Scorpion Aero as it is black with a few gold accents, but it's very nice. It does have a few things that sets it apart from the Scorpion era. And if you want to check that out, then there you go. But coming back to the 70th anniversary, like I said, we had a 70th line. Now, if you go on Auto Trader, you'll probably see that quite a few 595s have 70th line in the title. And pretty much it just means that it has a few nice little bits and bobs. There's badges on the side, but there's nothing really crazy that those cars get. It's the 70th anniversary model, which whew, that's where things start to get spicy. Now we'll start off with the paint, just like we did in the uh, XSR video. It's gonna be sort of similar to that where we talk through it. I'll have pictures on the top of the screen. So the color, it's quite unique indeed. It's the first dark green we've had and it's called Record Green. Now, we actually have had Record Green in the past, going all the way back to the original Abarth 595, the classic one. And well, that was to celebrate all the achievements and records that Abarth had made. A very nice color indeed, and I really, really dig it. It did have a few red accents on the classic original one, but on the modern variant, we have Gara white accents. And there's something else I want to talk to you about in a second, which is pretty awesome. But record green, lovely color, and I'm glad they went with that because, hey, it's a historic color and it looks fantastic on a Series 4. Now, we do have Gara white, like I said, on some of the bits and bobs, wing mirrors, front and rear lip, and I believe on the center cap for the wheel. I could be wrong on that, don't quote me. I'll check it out when I edit the video, but you'll see it on the pictures. But one thing we do get that's in white is the wide body kit. And that's right, people, we get a wide arch kit on this car. We get side skirts, the arches, and it looks amazing. It really does increase the aggressiveness of this car, and it just looks phenomenal. Now, we haven't had that many 695s or a baths with a wide arch kit. The only ones that I can recall are the sort of recent 131 Rally, the SS, the 70th, and the Biposto. I believe that's all of them. Uh, yeah, that, that is all of them, I'm pretty sure. So those four are the only ones that have had the wide arch kit equipped onto them as standard. Now you can purchase this kit. It's a little bit hard to find. I don't know how much it would go for. You'd probably have to pay a fair amount for it, but it looks amazing if you do get it on there. And whew, looks great indeed, especially on the 70th anniversary model with all the little other bits too. 
great looking car. Now the stripe is also lowered on the side where it cuts off because of the kit, but it does look really nice actually. It's the first stripe that's been lowered further down to the side skirt. It looks really nice in my opinion. Now as for the rest of the car, sort of the same apart from the wing which we'll get back to later, but the rest of it sort of the same as the Series 4. But we do get a nice white bonnet scorpion and a white checkered roof, which looks awesome in my opinion. I really wanted to do it, but it's quite difficult. You've got to have, I think it's, there's like 32 squares on the roof. There's an insane mount on there. So you'd have to get quite a lot of wrap to make it yourself. But on the 70th model, it looks really, really good. And of course it gives it that racing feeling to it. So I'm glad that they went with that. I believe that we also get some other white decals, but I think that's more, um, you know, just the, the lip on the front of the back and stuff like that. I can't recall any other, you know, unique details on the car. But if we come to the badges, you'll see that we've got heritage badges on the car now, on the front, back, and on the interior. Really, really cool that they went with you, those classic badges instead of the modern ones. The modern ones obviously look fantastic. That's what we all know and love. But putting classic badges on there, that's a real nod to the original version of the above. And it just looks great. I mean, hey, original badges, can't go wrong with that at all. Now, we also do get a record Monza on this car, which one of the best exhausts, in my opinion. You've got the Akapovic and you've got all of the others, but you can't go wrong with a record Monza. It's a fantastic sounding exhaust. Apart from that, the rest of it's sort of the same. We do get 17 inch SS wheels on this car. Again, great choice to go with those. One of the sportiest wheels in the lineup and they just look fan dabby doozy. Now, pretty much that's kind of it. With the rest of it's sort of standard. You do get either Peak Zeros or Michelin Pilot Sports. Either way, fantastic tyre, handle well. But that's kind of it for the exterior. I know I'm going through this a little bit quick or quickly, but um, I sort of want to make sure that this video isn't too long. I don't want to yap, guys. I don't want to take you guys to Yappersville because, hey, I just want to give you guys the most important details and go over it in the best way that I can, but not drag it on. So the exterior looks great. We have a lot of unique details on there and makes it look fan dabby doozy indeed. It's now time to talk about the interior. So coming to the interior now, and it's sort of the same as any other Series 4 really. We do have it nice and teched up with the 7 inch screen, the Competizione shifter, digital AC panel and digital instrument cluster. Very nice, very modern. We do love a good bit of tech inside these cars. We do have the turbo gauge, of course. Classic badges on the wheel and carbon fiber too. And hey, you can't go wrong with a good bit of carbon fiber on the steering wheel. But apart from that, it's sort of the same as most of the other Series 4s and Special Edition interiors, but still looks fantastic. We get a matte grey dashboard like you would in the Competiciones. I really do dig that. It looks very nice indeed. But the biggest change on the interior for the 70th Anniversary Edition is, drum roll please, the say belts. And that's right, guys. Of course, with it being an anniversary model and one of the sportiest of the lot, we've got to have say belts. That is just something that has to be in there. Say belt seats, best out of the lot. You can't go wrong with a good pair of say belts. But it's not just the say belt seats, guys. No, no, no. They're custom say belts. Now, what do I mean by custom? How can you customize a say belt seat? Well, as we've seen in a few other of the special editions, we have nice stitching logos and different designs in the say belts that make them unique to that model. And well, the 70th anniversary is one of those models that get a very nice custom say belt. Now, in the seat, we do have a little Italian flag. We've got 70th anniversary. And of course, we do have a bath too. We have a very nice brown stripe going down the middle of the seat, Alcantara, and I believe you do get carbon backs. I think that may be exclusive to some of them. I could be wrong on that, but I think some of them do get say belts with carbon backs, which is awesome if you can find one with it. But normal say belts with just the regular backs are still sick anyway, but you get custom ones. So hey, I wouldn't complain with that. Carbon or not, they still look amazing. So, so custom seats, nice interior, sporty, and have a few classic heritage bits on it as well. 
it's a very nice place to be in. Now, I did actually sit inside one of these 70th anniversary models, and I was taken back by how nice it was. We did get 695 mats too, which was also a nice touch, but it just felt very modern and very very sporty i guess I, it was a very nice experience but um oh oh man it's, it's happening already the heat it's getting to me guys oh, give me a sec yeah. oh goodness gracious guys sorry about that i had to take a second to cool off because it's getting very hot now i think the temperature's going up which is crazy i mean hey makes for a nice day but oh, definitely difficult when you're recording but anyway coming back to what i was saying you get a very nice interior with a few custom bits added to it 10 out of 10 in my book so it's now time to talk about the engine and a few of the handling bits and bobs that you get with this car so let's move on now i did mention earlier that you do get pirellis or michelins with this car either p0s or pilot sports either way you're going to get a great fantastic tire that handles really well as for the brakes of course it's Brembo's. What else would you go with on a LeBarth but Brembo brakes? Fantastic. Really do work well. And I've experienced them a few times. They're great. I can indeed tell you they do work. So apart from the brakes and the tyres, of course, you do get the record Monza at the back, which sings, by the way, especially when you floor it. It sounds amazing. But connected to that exhaust is the 1.4 turbo with a Garrett. And hey, we do love a Garrett on this channel. It's a great turbo and really packs a punch in these cars. But with the Garrett turbo, you get 180 brake. So it's you get the powerful figure and combined with the Garrett, it's an absolute monster and provides a crazy experience. Now let's move on and talk about why it's a good alternative to the Biposto. So as we all know, the Biposto is the king of the Abarths, the most craziest and insane one ever built. Everything on that car is custom. Custom suspension and hydraulics. We get 18-inch OZ Super Legeras, Acropovic, full carbon engine bay, custom seats, uh, roll cage, seat delete. I could go on for hours about the Piposto and why it's so awesome. But, of course, with it being the most insane one ever built, it does have a pretty insane price tag too. Now at the time, a few years back, you could get one of these for around 25 to 30 grand, which wasn't too bad, I thought. It was kind of an obtainable price, a sensible price. But nowadays, whew, that price has skyrocketed to around 40,000 pounds, which is absolutely insane. I saw one for 45 a few weeks back. That was a red one, like a Passione red one, which was very, very rare indeed. So I guess, but still 40 grand for a record gray Riposto is insanity. I know it's one of the best ones yet and best ones to ever be put on the roads, but I just think that 40 grand is a lot of money for an Abarth. Believe me, I'm happy to pay money for an Abarth because they are such awesome cars. But £40,000, that's a lot of money. So, you are, you're better off with some alternatives. And some alternatives are the 131 Rally, the SS, the 70th, and a few of the other 695s too. Because they're not as much money as the Biposto, and they're pretty insane too. So why do I recommend you going for the 70th anniversary as an alternative to the Biposto? Well, because it's sort of similar. It has the body kit, it has really nice wheels, it's got power, it's got seats, it doesn't have as much carbon like that car does, or custom bits and bobs like suspension, but it's still a pretty well set up car. And I've actually forgot to mention something, guys. The spoiler. The spoiler is the craziest part of this car because it's adjustable. Now, I don't think I mentioned this earlier, so I do apologize if I didn't talk about the wing because it's the craziest part of the car. It's adjustable. You can angle it to around 90 degrees, I believe it is, and it just looks great. It's got a bath underneath it too, and <laughs> it's so awesome. Now, there is a downside to this wing, and it's that it does cost £2,500. So if it does get damaged and you need to replace it, yeah, good. It's a lot of money to do so. And if, Or if you just want one for your own above, 
a lot of money, that's for sure. But it's a great wing and looks fantastic. I can't believe I forgot to talk about the wing. One of the best parts, along with the say belts. But yeah, so now that I've talked about that, coming back onto the topic, I do think it's a fantastic car and a fantastic alternative to the Biposto. Because if you don't want to spend 40 grand, but you want a car that's similar to the Biposto, then the 70th anniversary is a great choice. Because it's got the body kit, it's got exhaust, it's got a really nice interior and exterior, and a few heritage bits and bobs. It's a really great car. And it's built for the track, um, pretty much. I mean, you've got that adjustable wing, you've got all the bits and bobs. I mean, literally on the press or the, uh, you know, is it press release? I think that's the right way that you say it. Um, I watched the video of Steph ABTV when he was at the day, uh, the event when they were released and they were showing them off. They took them on track and <laughs> why would you not? I mean, that's what they're built for and they're capable of being on track too. So it is a pretty cool track weapon. I mean, the Biposto is purely for the track, really. I don't really believe it's a everyday daily car. I mean, hey, two seats, crazy suspension. I imagine it's a bit of a bumpy and chaotic ride. So that's more of a track car. But if you want a car that's, you know, 50-50 track and daily, then the 70th is the most insane one to go for because it's got all those bits and bobs. As for the price, it's currently sitting at around twenty to twenty-two thousand pounds, which I think is actually an all right price for a six nine five with the body kit on it. And personally, I would pay that. I think that's a sensible price for a car like that, especially with all the bits that it's got. That's a good price for a good car. So if you guys want to go for something that's like a Bipasto but doesn't have that forty grand price tag, then the seventieth anniversary is the one for you. And that, my friends, will wrap up today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. It's the second video in a series that I'm now going to make this into of going through all of the special editions. If you want a certain special edition talked about in the next video, then leave it in the comments down below and I'll be happy to get back to you on it and make a video on the car you, you'd want to see. But for now, that's everything, guys. If you want to see any content at all and see it as soon as it comes out, you guys know what to do. Hit that bell, like, comment, and subscribe, because it's always appreciated. And well, I'm going to get myself inside, guys, and cool off. I'm going to throw so many ice packs and ice cubes on me, because I'm sweltering. But Bruh. I'll see you in the future, guys. Have a good one.